Hello, hello, welcome everyone to this new series where I will teach you how to make assets for city skylines and how to model them, how to texture them and all that jazz. Uh, I'm not the best one in the community to make assets, but I do know quite a lot of things which I learned by myself uh, with the help of tutorials and so on. But I feel like most of the tutorials that you see nowadays on YouTube and so on are quite outdated. Uh, my plan is to make two playlists, uh, one where we will have around seven videos, they are going to be quite short, uh, where I will explain to you in each video what, uh, how, to, how to do certain things, tips and tricks and so on and so forth. And in the second playlist, I'm going to model something from Google Street View, I don't know, a warehouse or whatever, and we will apply the knowledge that we learned in this playlist that I'm currently doing. So it's going to be two playlists. Uh, as I said, I'm not the best one, but I know quite a lot of things. Uh, and we will focus on buildings. That's what I'm going to teach you, how to make buildings. There's plenty of people out there who are better in other certain areas. Like, for example, Eva Metri, she's extremely good at making airplanes. Uh, for trains, you have Revo, who's really, really talented. And for nature, you have like Pidelmo, Mr. Mason, Greyflame and all those people. Now, I don't know how to make those things. I have a general idea, but I never tried. Those guys are specialized in their own niche, let's say. I like to do buildings and props sometimes. But anyway, what you will learn in this playlist, um, you, you can take it further and uh, develop your own style and do whatever else you want. Um, for this thing, I already prepared uh, an add-ons folder. Uh, it's gonna be on my website, it's gonna be here, like it's gonna be a new tab, resources, so you can download everything that I use, everything that I currently use to make my own assets will be over here, I will give you absolutely everything you need. Uh, this is not a way for me to advertise my website, uh, some people will say, ah, oh, he's doing this for commissions, yes, I do take commissions and there's plenty more people which I can recommend to you, but in general, us, the people who make assets for commissions, we don't earn that much contrary to popular belief. Uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, if you don't want to learn all this uh, crazy process, like obviously pay someone, if, if, if you have a building that you really, really want in game, obviously pay someone to make it for you. Um, so yeah, let's uh, get started. What I recommend uh, in this video, we are going to discuss how to set up Blender. So you're going to have it the same way that I do. I'm going to go over a couple of important things. And um, yeah, what I recommend you is to download the latest version of Blender, which can be found on blender.org. Uh, I always use the last ver version. Well, technically I have two versions. You can install as many Blender versions as you want, but I recommend you the long-term support one, the LTS version, uh, which I currently installed. I haven't even opened it, so we are going to do everything step by step. And yeah, let's, uh, let's open Blender and uh, start this. Again, I'm talking uh, live right now. I don't have a script or anything, so pardon my English. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's go. So... First moment you open Blender, you can see the version here, I don't care, uh, select everything and press X and delete everything in the scene. Now we're going to go over a couple of things. So first is to delete all those things, then we go over here on this um, little gizmo thing and we're going to enable the move. So if we add the cube here, we have those arrows. For, for moving. I don't like to enable, this is extra preference, I don't like to enable those because they always get in the way and they are annoying. Uh, then I'm going to press tab to get into edit mode, you can see here object mode, edit mode. So we go into edit mode and over here on overlays, we enable statistics because we always care about those things, which I'm going to explain later on. We enable face orientation and we enable edge length. And this is my preferred way of doing things. Then we move on over here, scene properties, and we go to units and unit system. I recommend you to use metric and length. I always model in centimeters. You can go crazy and every, everything millimeter perfect, but I feel like for city skylines, like a variation of a few millimeters doesn't really matter that much. So that's my preferred way of doing things. Um, all right. So with that out of the way, uh, let's move on to the shading tab the shading viewport, so over here you have different, this is once it's textured, this one, this is for rendering, 
and this is where we'll model in this uh, shading. Uh, my preferred one is the second one here. This is personal preference, obviously. Uh, I like to have it on color vertex. I like to enable uh, shadow and cavity. And um, for uh, cavity, I set it to both and I enable ridge to zero because um, you can see here on the edges, like um, see how they get that glowing effect. I don't like that. Anyway, uh, depth of fill, let me triple check. Everything seems fine. Okay. So now with that out of the way, uh, let's move on to what should we do? Uh, let's go to preferences. Uh, one, one more thing over here on the snapping. Uh, I like to prefer having it on vertex and edge center. You can select multiple of those. So click on vertex and then holding shift, you're going to press edge center. The rest of the settings are fine. And then over here on the pivot, move it to bounding box center. I will explain to you those things later on in the tutorial. Uh, now let's move on to preferences and let's go step by step. So what we do here uh, in interface, we disable the splash screen because that's really annoying. Uh, let me remember if there's anything else. No. All right. Let's go to teams. Uh, let's start with the blender dark. So that's, mm, that's what we currently have. And this one we are going to tweak. So first things first, let's open the 3d viewport and, um, grid. I don't like seeing the grid. So we turn the alpha to zero. Okay. Uh, let's scroll down a little bit and let's see where do we have, I'm either blind or, uh, face orientation front. All right. So this, we turn alpha to zero. Uh, what this does is basically if you have an inverted face, so right now this face is currently facing in this direction. So it's outside, but if, for example, you have it inverted, like it's facing inwards, like inside in city skylines, you're going to see this invisible. Like basically you're going to see on the inside of the block. All right. So that that's why I keep it in this way. So whenever I see red, there's a problem there. So what you do is press alt N and then flip. So now it's uh, faced outside. Uh, previously the blue was that it's facing outside. I don't want to see that. I want to see how the object looks. All right. Edit preferences. Let's go back. Um, teams. What else was here? Um, one second, 3d viewport, and then let's scroll here a little bit. Um, edge length text. I, uh, set this to, wait, why don't you see the colors? Okay. I set this to some, um, blue. I like that. I will show you what this does. Edge length text. And then. Over here, vertex size, set it to five. I like to have a bit more uh, pronounced vertexes. And um, uh, where is it? There was somebody here. Um, team space and gradient colors. I really, really like how Maya is uh, having the, the background. So I have the values for this over here. So gradient high. You go to hex code and type this code here. Okay. And the gradient low. Let me grab the number. It's going to be this. I really, really like how this uh, looks. Okay. And um, yeah, this was the uh, color for the text. So whenever we have text, I really feel like this blue is uh, quite a good contrast. You can see it from everywhere. So you can see the edge length. And uh, let me see what else is there. Um, let's go back, edit preferences. Um, status bar, scene statistics, like over here on the bottom right corner, we can see the scene statistics and I usually enable system memory, but that's not mandatory. You can uncheck or check the Blender version. That's not that important, honestly. Uh, now another important thing is going to navigation and uh, enabling depth. Uh, this is a very annoying thing. Like you couldn't scroll previously a lot with the um, scroll wheel. So it would get slower and slower by enabling depth. You can scroll forever. 
uh, and then zoom to mouse position. This is really, really useful because if I want to zoom here, it's very easy. If I want to zoom on this vertex, I can zoom or this face, you know, like it's, it's very easy. You just point where you want to go with your camera and then scroll. Um, let's go to system and you always want to enable optics if you have um, a good uh, a good nvidia card i have a geforce rtx 2070 which is decent if not if not you go to cuda and you enable your cpu if you have a good uh, gpu enable the gpu if you have a good cpu enable the cpu undo steps set this to maximum 256 so basically 256 times you can press ctrl z z z z z z z and you can go back if you made a mistake. So that's really, really useful. Um, let's go here, save the preferences. Okay. And one more thing, we're going to go to UV editing and we're going to press N from November to open this menu. And then we go to view and we click this one, pixel coordinates. I will show you what this does a bit later. Okay. Um, with that out of the way, uh, we enable the units here. All right, so now what we got to do is install some add-ons. So I already prepared the folder. You can just download it and you go to edit, add-ons and then install. And let me go to the folder. First one, auto reload blender add-on. Double click, install. It is installed. Next one, Texel density, extremely important. Enable, yes. Text tools, very good. Enable. Yes, intense menu. This is the one I made myself. Very, very, very useful. Uh, you will learn more about this one. I will teach you. I already have a video about it, but yeah. Um, what is? Uh, we have the Oscur Art tools, which is a bit trickier to install. You cannot just install it here. So we go to Add-ons, and we grab this folder. I already placed the README file here, uh, so we we'll figured it out. But basically, you just go to App Data, Roaming, Blender Foundation, Blender, the version that you have. Currently, this is the one that uh, we are doing. Scripts, add-ons, and then uh, throw the folder here. And now if you go back over here, we can search Oscur. Wait, I think I have to restart Blender for that. Uh, and now some default that come with Blender, default add-ons. Search for Loop Tools. Enable this, very, very useful add-on. And then images as planes. So images and, and check this one as well. Um, let me see. Is that, yeah, I really have to refresh the the Blender to show it. Uh, I really have to restart Blender for the Oscur Art tool thing to show up here. All right, so uh, now let's just, uh, let's just uh, save startup file. Okay, and let's close Blender and open it again. Well, we can save this uh, this one as well. It doesn't matter. Okay, let me restart because I want to install the Blender. I want to show you everything, guys. So, um, okay. So now let's go back, edit preferences, add-ons, and if we search for Oscur Art, see we have it. This is an extremely useful add-on, and what it does, I'm gonna show you quickly. Like if you have multiple objects and you want to align this one right in the middle of those two. You can just select first one, second one, last one, and then you go to Tool, Oscur Art, Distribute Objects, on which axis? On this one, X. So click OK, and now it's perfectly in the middle. It's it's extremely useful add-on. Uh, but anyway, let's not focus on that. Uh, let's delete this one as well. So we installed all the add-ons. Um, now let's configure this uh, mess here so we don't need the modeling tab we don't need the sculpting tab you don't sculpt you don't texture paint you don't animate anything you don't render anything compositing you don't care about geometry nodes you don't care about scripting you don't care about those are the only three that i use uh, for this one animation frames you don't care about this so in between those two parts where you see this arrow uh, right click and then join areas so which one do you want uh, like we want the top one to be on the button. So move this arrow here and click join. So now we have it like this. All right. And now one more last thing. I added um, two things, two very useful things in uh, the add-ons folder. So we go to import FBX 
and we go to add-ons and we have Gigi. Gigi is my favorite thing ever. It's the worker from City Skylines. It has the correct height of a sim. So whatever height they have in game, I think it's 165 or something like that. Uh, I have it here. And then also, also import FBX, GG sitting. Uh, you have to continue the tradition. We always call it GG and uh, yeah. So this is GG sitting. So basically this is really useful. This is how a sim uh, sits in, in game. So if you want to make some benches or whatever, you will know the correct height to, to make them. All right, so let's just move those a little bit out of the way. And uh, we go one more time, edit, preferences, save everything, save all of the preferences, all of the add-ons, everything that we did over here, okay? And then file, defaults, save, startup file. Meaning every time that we open Blender, a new instance of a, of a project, it will always start with all of the settings that we applied so far. So if we close Blender now, we don't have to save, like we just open Blender and you can see we already have the GG ready to go and we can just uh, start modeling whatever we want. All right. So that was the first thing on how to set up Blender the way I do. It's important that you do those things because they make a lot of sense once we will start modeling. Uh, some of those colors and all that are pre personal preference, you can do them however you want. Uh, but I recommend you to follow my settings in, so that you won't uh, ask me like uh, what add-on is that or whatever and so on and so forth. All right. So, uh, all right. That's it. I will see you in the next episode where we are going to go over some modeling tips and tricks. All right. And then we will discuss about UV unwrapping, texturing, normal maps, illumination maps, specular maps, color maps, uh, how to bake LODs and how to import everything to CT scanners. But that's in a future video. All right. So see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.